Okay, I've completed my Nathan, Nathan uh, stubble field coil replication. I have made a couple changes to this coil. Instead of iron wire, I'm using aluminum wire. It's a lot easier to wind, and I had an idea that it might create a crisper um, magnetic field collapse, a faster collapse to the magnetic field than the iron wire. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm using on this coil. I do have my secondary on here now. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions about whether or not the coil needs to be wet to operate. It does need to be moist, but not too wet. Um, this coil, I have not wet this coil down in, I guess since I made it. When I made it, I wet it down some, but it's been, that was three days ago, and I've not moistened it at all since then. And it seems to be working better now as the coil dries out. So yeah, I have my soft iron core and my copper and aluminum wire run side by side out to, I don't know, about halfway out, and then I've got a secondary on the rest of the coil. The LED um, that you see over here is connected to the secondary. Um, when you do a make and break switch connection between the copper and the aluminum wire, it generates current in the secondary coil exactly as Nathan Stubblefield described. You can see here that when I connect and disconnect those primary wires, there is definitely a current induced in the secondary. And what I've designed uh, for my coil is this little rotating um, magnetic ro uh, wheel here. All it is is a bearing on a spindle and a, I've got four magnets on it. And I have a reed switch. So when this reed switch closes, it pulses, well it actually uh, turns the primary core of this coil and the soft iron core into electromagnet. And that electromagnet pushes this um, wheel around to the next position as you see here, and it just takes off and spins up faster and faster. But what that's also doing is it's pulsing the magnetic field through the secondary coil and generating the, uh, the light and the current you see here in the LED. So it's very, very interesting. It works exactly as Nathan Stubblefield uh, described in his patent. And it's just a lot of fun. It's really, really a neat little gizmo. When I show it to people, there's always sh they're always sure that I have a battery hidden away in this coil somewhere. It's kind of hard to believe that the coil is its own battery um, electromagnet self-generating induction coil, basically like uh, Stubblefield described it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I just thought I would share it now that I've got it finished. I do plan on putting this in the ground and seeing if I detect any power increase from having it in the ground. That'll be my next test.